This next tip is all about finding and fixing errors in your worksheet using formula auditing tools. Now in your formulas tab, you'll find a group of individual tools under the formula auditing category that are designed to help you trace references, evaluate your formula calculations, and ultimately diagnose and fix any errors in your worksheet. So we're going to talk about all of these different options in this demo. We're going to start with tracing precedence and dependence, which basically draws arrows to any cells that either impact or are impacted by the selected value, kind of like a parent-child relationship. And here's an example of what that looks like. In this case, which we'll talk through in our demo, we're tracing the precedence that impact these cash to close and monthly expense values so that we can understand which input cells will impact those values or those outputs. We also have a number of other tools we're gonna to talk about. Show formulas is simply gonna temporarily display any worksheet formulas as text. And then error checking is gonna scan the sheet for errors, help us trace the source back to any precedent cells. And finally, my personal favorite, the evaluate formula tool that's going to allow us to actually evaluate every single individual component of a function or formula step by step. And that's great for pinpointing where a formula might be breaking, especially if you have a very complex formula or a number of nested functions. So a ton of practical use cases here. Uh, for one, simply understanding how some of these complex formulas and functions might be operating. Uh, number two, visualizing which cells factor into a certain formula output or cell, and then three, tracing, diagnosing, and hopefully fixing the source of any errors that you run into. So with that, let's jump into the demo. Let's get hands-on in our pro tip workbook and practice working with some of these auditing tools. All right, so if you're following along, go ahead and open up your pro tip workbook. Look for the formula auditing tools demo in the formula tip section, and go ahead and press link to jump straight to that sheet. And what we're looking at here is a property calculator. It's a basic model um, that I actually use to evaluate property and loan costs. And essentially what's going on here is you've got some basic information about a property, got a purchase price and a tax rate. You can enter some loan terms here like a down payment, an interest rate, and a term length. And those values will run through a number of calculations and ultimately spit out the cash required to close on the property and an estimate for monthly expenses. But obviously we're not here to talk about mortgage payments and property costs right now. We're here to talk about evaluating formulas. So with that, let's go into our formulas tab, take a look at our formula auditing group, which contains those tools that we talked about. And let's start by talking about precedence and dependence because it sounds very complicated, but it's actually quite simple. And one way to think about it is, you know, for this monthly expense value, the cell that I have selected. This is kind of the end of the calculation flow. This monthly expense number doesn't feed into any other formulas. No other output cells are impacted by this monthly expense value. In other words, this cell has no dependent cells. And I can prove that by clicking trace dependence and I'll get this kind of warning message that says there are no formulas that refer to this active cell. But there are cells, of course, that serve as inputs to this monthly expense value. In other words, there are cells that act as precedents to the selected cell. And to show those precedents, all I need to do is click that button and it's gonna say, yep, these five values here, H14 through H18, all impact this monthly expense number. In other words, if you change any of these values, monthly expenses will change as well. Same story here with cash to close. There are no dependents. This is the end of the calculation flow, but there are a number of precedents. So the cash to close value is a function of purchase price, down payment, and estimated closing costs. Now, another way to kind of tell a similar story here, we can remove the arrows, is to select a formula cell and either click into the formula bar or use the F2 shortcut to edit. And what this will do, you won't get the arrows, but you'll still see selected cells that are referenced within your formula. And what I actually like about this approach is that they're color coded as well. So you can kind of map them to the individual components within that formula. Just yet another tool that you can put in your back pocket to help you diagnose and understand your formulas. So we can go ahead, press enter. 
And we've traced precedence from these cells, but the opposite relationship holds true as well. So we know that cash to close was a dependent of purchase price. Therefore, purchase price is a precedent to cash to close. And we can show that by tracing the dependence from this cell. And now what this is showing us is that if we change purchase price, there are one, two, three, four, five cells or outputs that are going to change as a result. There are five dependent cells based on this value. And now one cool tip that I didn't discover until just recently is that this only shows you the first step of the calculation path when in turn some of these dependent cells also have additional dependents from there. So purchase price impacts loan amount, closing costs, and property tax. But if we click trace dependents again, now we can see there's another layer here where the property tax value, as we've shown, also impacts this monthly expense output. So now we're seeing kind of the full chain of events and the full calculation flow across multiple steps. Really powerful tool. Let's go ahead and remove those arrows. I'll show you what the show formulas tool looks like. Pretty straightforward. It just stretches out your cells so that it can show the actual formulas as text kind of all side by side. Good way to compare, you know, which cells in a sheet are constants and which ones are formulas. And then you can simply toggle that on or off. Now onto my favorite option, the evaluate formula tool. Let's pick one of these formulas here, um, something like property tax, click evaluate formula. It's going to pull up this dialog box and you'll see right from the start the exact same formula that you'll see in your formula bar. But what you can do now is actually look at the underlined component. Um, when you click evaluate here, just that underlined component will evaluate. So it just said that H3 evaluates to 499,000 because H3 is the purchase price. And then when that gets divided by 1,000, that evaluates to 499. And then as we step through, we can continue the process. H4 is 9.5. 9.5 times 499 is 4740.5 divided by 12 gives us that 395 monthly property tax payment. So again, great way to kind of understand your formulas at a deeper level. And there's one other feature to that evaluate formula tool that can be helpful. To show you that, we're going to go to our cash to close formula and we're going to evaluate that one. And it's a pretty simple formula, H3 times H7 plus H11 H3 is 499, H7 is 0.2, multiply them together, it's 99,800. Now here's the thing, when we get to H11, H11 contains a value of 9980, but that 9980 isn't a static hard-coded value, it's produced itself from another function. So this step in button allows you to say, okay, H11 is a little bit more complicated, let's see how H11 itself is being produced and by going one level deeper, by peeling back kind of one more layer of the onion, we can now see that H11 is calculated as H3 times 0.02. We can evaluate this formula kind of nested within our original one and then step back out and say, okay, that's how we're getting to the 9980. And then when we add them up, we get to our final product, which is 109.780. So, there you have it, that's evaluate formula. Obviously, everything looks a lot easier and simpler when things are going well. So let's walk through one quick sample of when things might not be functioning uh, quite as you'd expect. So let's say we wanna enter down payment percent of 10%, but our finger slips, whoops, and we type 10p percent. You know, obviously something's wrong here. We've got four cells that are now spitting out a value error. This is a good time to use that error checking tool here, which will actually cycle through your sheet and say, hey, we found a bunch of errors. The first one's in cell J9. If you click next, there's another one in H10. We've got one in H14, one in J3. And then you'll have a bunch of options here for each of the errors. Uh, help on this error will take you to the office support website. Show calculation steps will actually take you to the evaluate formula tool and specifically to the step that yields the error. And this right here will show me that we're trying to multiply 499,000, which is a value, by this text string surrounded by quotes, 10p percentage, which evaluates to that value error. 
which obviously as you carry it through is just going to yield a final error at the end of the day. So let's close that out. One other way that you can use this error checking tool, if we go to the next error, whoops, it completed it. Um, this is the one we want, monthly expenses. Go back into error checking. Sometimes you get this option to actually trace the error as well. And when you do that, it will populate those precedent arrows with one difference. It will turn the arrow red at the stage where the error is taking place. And this is a nice way to kind of trace things back and say, okay, step one is fine. Step two is fine. Point where step three should be evaluated. That's where an error is taking place. So I know that it's the input value right before step three that's causing my problem, which in this case is cell H7. It's that messed up down payment percentage and we've isolated the problem. So we can go ahead and close out of this. We can remove our arrows and we can fix that percentage to 10% and press enter and all is right with the world. So a lot of tools in there, a lot to cover, but really helpful, valuable options to keep in your back pocket if you work with formulas and functions in Excel.